And hello there folks, RJB here from RJB TV. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something special. It's Bjol against professional player Bishop. So two professional players. Bjol, largely a former professional player. He no longer really tries to play professionally. Mostly just plays fastest map. Sometimes he plays a little bit of normal map, but not a whole lot of it. And then we have... Here's Biel on the bottom, Purple Terran, and then Yellow Protoss, it's Q-L-T-Y-Q July, and he's known as Bishop. He played in two ASL seasons, he played in the last ASL season, in ASL season 15. He's a professional player, he's very good, he plays every single race, professionally, but mostly plays Zerg and Terran. Although over the past couple for the past year actually, over the past year he's largely been playing Terran and a little bit of Zerg on the side and almost no Protoss but he can play every single one of those races at a professional level. So it's gonna be fun and interesting to see how this kind of up-and-coming new professional player Bishop is gonna do against Biol who has a lot of fastest map experience compared to Bishop who is I'd say a little bit newer to fastest map. He's been playing a little bit of fastest map team games for the past two, maybe three months with a lot of other very good fastest players. But he actually is mostly known for his absolutely absurd amounts of skill on Hunters. He is, I think, perhaps one of the five best players on Hunters in the world. Which is a very high level. That's a very extremely high level. He's basically... You could say he's almost the brain of Hunters. That's how good he is at Hunters. So we have Bill here going for Barracks. Uh, oh, wait, let me just double check. Oh, I thought he was going to go for a Mech Bolt Order, but he's just walling off that front with a Barracks Supply Depot, Supply Depot, Barracks Bolt Order. Looks a little bit weird to me, but there's a lot of logic behind this. Whereas Bill here is going for a Dragoon Bolt Order. Gateway, uh, he went for Pylon Gas Gateway, Gateway, Gateway. Then, when the first gateway finishes up, he gets a Cybercorp but does not make a single Zealot to save up money for Singularity Charge and three Dragoons at the same time. But he's gonna get found by a Marine here, Marine from Biol, walking into his base, and he's not too pleased about that. But he will be able to defend himself quite easily against that one Marine. Because I do think he's got some really good probe micro. So losing probes might have... Oh, look, that's what I mean. Did you see the probe micro? He faced through the marine. Didn't exactly go as planned as he didn't kill it. But that was that's the kind of stuff that you see at professional level. Phasing through units using every single little trick available to get yourself an advantage. So Singularity Charge on the way, three Dragoons on the way. And the marines are here in the base, but... Bishop has bought himself just enough time to kill one SCV, lose one probe, and buy time for Dragoons to spawn. Dragoons are already pushing out. He's gonna snipe the SCV. Takes a lot of damage on his Dragoons. A lot of damage on that one Dragoon, but he stays alive. The micro is really good. This guy is known for his micro. I mean, he's a professional player. What else do we have to say? His micro is great. Buell, likewise, really good micro. And the Dragoon literally stays alive with just 9 HP, just 2 more hits and is down, but it stays alive. Now on the counter attack, Biol bottling a bunker there in the front, he's in some trouble. We have no factor on the way from Biol, he went for a command center first. And in the academy there, they're being built, getting a second nexus, more Dragoons are on the way. Fight happening in the front, lost the weak Dragoon, got sniped. Tried to prevent the construction of the bunkers, but it was a little bit too late. Has to wait for Dragoon range. Three more Dragoons on the way. When all three Dragoons are on the scene, you can start hitting the bunker from afar. We have Marine range on the way. When Marine range finishes up, the bunker will have the same range as the Dragoon, and the Dragoon can no longer shoot on the bunker. So there's a very small time frame here for Bishop to kind of mess and poke and harass. Buell's bunkers here in the front. We got two SCVs there to repair. You kind of need one SCV per Dragoon. He's pulling more SCVs, four in total. Might not be enough, might be enough. And yeah, he's doing a little bit more damage than the SCVs are repairing. You really need one 
SCD per goon. But the Marine there buys time. Bill deliberately throws away a Marine to buy time so that the Raccoon's focus on the Marine, the bunker can get repaired for more SCDs to arrive. The amount of detail in display, the amount of brains that are being displayed are really, really impressive. He's gonna snipe the Raccoon, he's just, I'm not gonna be able to kill the bunker, I might just as well kill as many SCDs as I can and do some economic damage. He gets us around on the bunker, bunker goes down. Bishop with some insane decision making, but does pay for it by losing most of his Raccoons, only three of them alive. But Killed the bunker. Now the other bunker is a good target. Although Marine Mage just finished up, he can hit the barracks. So the reason he killed the bunker there is so that he can maybe hit the barracks from across the wall, but he doesn't have vision of that barracks. So he can't. Well, he has vision actually. Now he can hit it. When it's here, it can't hit, but when it's there, it can hit it. That's an interesting thing. So he goes in for the SCVs. He sees that they're not repairing. He sniped one SCV. Now going for the bunker. Bunker not getting repaired. Bill is caught slipping. Bill slipped really hard. And now the Raccoons are dying to damage from the bunker and the Marines. Bishop so far is displaying some of the most impressive decision making and micro I've seen in a very long time. And this is the very first game in my life that I'm seeing of this guy playing fastest. But so far, I am legitimately highly impressed with what he's doing. A year back at home, Templus Archive, Citadel of a Dune, getting a third Nexus, robotics on the way, no cannons around the Nexus, he's not expecting a tank drop, but you have a star put there from Byul, more damage are happening in the front, bunker went down, so five people are under attack, and so is the barracks, he's trying to break through or just do as much damage as he can, might even supply block Byul if he doesn't build more depots fast enough, but he's got two depots on the way, siege mode almost finished up, tank going to the front, Barracks gets killed, he's got two more barracks in the back, so he can still build factories. So not a lot of trouble there for him. One attack, four marines on the way, and four zealots. Siege mode finished up, he's ready to siege, ready to protect. Our temples are coming in, there's a big wide open hole there on the side, can he sneak through? Yes he can, do you have a scan? We have a scan in the back, so he can kill the two dark templars, but he only has a couple of marines in the front, he has to pull them back in order for the scan to actually um, to actually allow for enough damage to be dealt during the scan. Oh, both of them stay alive. He's got a second scan, but both of our temples are split up. Yeah, oh, oh, scans right in between both of them, gets them both. So even though the Dark Templars penetrated through all the way into that very exposed, wide open backside of Biol, they couldn't quite pound hard enough to do any damage. Is Biel gonna go for a drop? Yes, he is. Triple robot, double robotics support, but they're on the way. Shuttle finished up, getting two more shuttles. High Templars in the front. Zealots, excuse me, Dragoons, uh, looking for things around his base. He might start sending probes out to the sides to build some pylons for vision against those tank drops, which will probably be on the way sometime in the near future because they are just always a very good option to go for. We've got Dragoons on the side to protect against tank drop, some cannons on the left, some cannons coming in on the right, two cannons in the front. So not a lot of cannons yet. Definitely not enough to protect against a tank drop, but that's why we've got those three Dragoons there to help out killing dropships and tanks. There it is, there's a dropship flying from across the map. Got probes functioning as an advanced warning system and it Appears on the minimap, and he knows it's coming in. He's moving his dragoons to try and intercept, putting him into position to try and snipe. He's dancing back and forth. He scanned just earlier. He knows where every single dragoon that Bishop has is located. So he tries to find another angle to get spotted again by a pro. Puts them on the high ground instead. Bill does not believe he's got what it takes to hit the probes with a tank drop. Even though that's a pretty good shot or attempt or angle or yeah he, he can try he can try. The loses two tanks, but Templars can sell there killing the tanks. Bishop deals with it very nicely, but Biol is not gonna sit around and wait much longer. He scanned B uh, B Bishop's base earlier. He knows what Bishop has. And well, that's a lot of high Templars. Gonna try to snipe as many of them as he can. But storm there on a group of Marines. That's a lot of them down already. And even more going down, runs out of the storm, 
picks up some High Templars trying to save them. Runs forward, trying to snipe the High Templars, but nope, that entire army you'll have, it's cleared out. It's gone. It's done. It's all being killed, erased from existence. Bishop might just go for the counter-attack at some point. Does he have shuttle speed? I assume so. He's got every single upgrade on the way for ground, getting air armor as well. So far, Bishop, it looks like he knows what he has to do. It looks like he understands fast map as well. He understands the map really, really well. From what I'm seeing so far, this is a lot like what fastest experts would do. This looks very good. So far, it looks very good. But Biol, of course, has a couple years more in experience. So how is Biol going to... Well, actually, let me rephrase that. How is Bishop going to break Biol's defense? Because Biol is very good at defending. He's particularly good at defending. How is Bishop going to break it? And then comes the question, how is Biol going to deal with what Bishop is going to try to throw at Biol? So far, five shuttles loaded up with Templars, Zealots, and no Corsair in the mix yet. So no Escort to get those shuttles into the base unharmed. We have somewhat of a small choke in the front. He might go for a choke drop. A lot of Biol's units are in the back. Bishop has more supply, he might just try to break through the front with a big mass attack. He's not going to unload the shuttles on the front. He's going to try to get into the backside while attacking in the front. I think if he unloads on the front with those shuttles, he can end the game with his massive supply lead. But he goes for a drop in the back, loses one shuttle, now unloading there on the scene. Templars on the scene, the storm, Reaver on the scene as well. Templars are getting sniped. Templars got target fired, doesn't kill a single SCV. Templars stuck on the top side, they got sniped, this drop was a disaster. Or maybe Gyol just dealt with it like an absolute monster of an expert. So the front largely goes down, but Bishop doesn't manage to deal any long-lasting, painful amounts of hurt onto Gyol. Who's now getting a 4th command center, he's got level... 1-1 one, one on the Marines, can level 2-2, two, two. the tanks are currently on 0-0, zero, zero. he's got 3 armories, 4 armories, all getting upgrades for tanks and air. So yeah, he's getting there, he's getting stronger and bigger, and 73 SCV, 75, Bishop on 68. I'd say he could get like 5 more and he'd be fine, but... I mean, with the, with the speed at which he's macroing and growing bigger, I'd say 68 is just perfectly fine. Just perfectly fine. Still needs a couple more cannons in the back. There's still a very wide open spot to use a tank drop on. Right here, there's some cannons on the side. So he's, he's getting control over the map as well. He's playing this very well. He's spending very quick. Now on 71 probes in total. Some tanks on the high ground. That might be difficult for Bishop to deal with. He might not have a lot of experience dealing with tanks on those high grounds. You do need to deal with those pretty quick. Either unload some zealots or either storm them. But they're pretty difficult to deal with if you don't have a lot of experience with them. More importantly though, we have eight shuttles here on the scene. One filled up with zealots, high templars, more high templars, more zealots, no reavers in between. Oh! One reaver in between, that's a big drop. Coming in off the right side, gonna fly right into that mineral line. Got some marines there in between, ready to protect you. Tanks each up, spaced out really nicely. Dog is being built as anti-drop. Attack that in the front gets repelled, he can't get through. He's gonna go in yet again, gonna try to distract in the front. Coming from the bottom, we all sees it immediately. He tries to target fire on those shells, but that's a lot of reaver in high temples on the scene, and Zelda there as well. These are running to safety. Some enemies do go down, but a lot of them, a lot of marines are sniping and killing whatever they can. But a lot of them are going down. Actually, he plays out the drop pretty quick. The stim on the unloading units. He had about 20 marines did the trick. The triple tank on the scene helps him take it all down. And most of the SCVs, importantly, do stay alive. Oh, still a high Templar in there. He tried to trick. He tricks him successfully, but. Biol runs away to safety just in time, just in time. So he stays alive, doesn't lose too much. 
another High Templar in there, but gets sniped again by the two tanks that are there, ready to shoot. So some trickery there up his sleeves, but Biol manages to deal with it just fine. That could have ended the game, but look at his minerals, it's so damn low. Biol would probably not have been able to keep up with Bishop's tags for much longer if he had lost all those STDs just there, right there and then on those minerals. He would have been broke, and perhaps too broke to properly recover. His base is completely filled out though. He's filled out, filled out his base pretty quickly. Same for Bishop, might need a couple more structures on the middle, maybe a couple more. He's got a lot of room for gateways, let's put it like that, a lot of room for gateways. These 12 and 6 o'clock bases have a lot of room for a lot of structures. A lot of room for a lot of structures. Another big drop being loaded up, scout in between in the mix, either an accident or maybe just for fun. We got a scout on the map, that's gonna be fun to watch. Will it do anything at all? Will it fail miserably? Usually, that's what scouts tend to do. Except against... Except against... What do you call it again? Oh, he's killing it. Yeah, so it turns out the scout was an accident, and it looks like Biol can see him kill the scout. Would have liked to see the scout do something, but it was an accident. The dropship being thrown away, also scouting for information. Proxy base being built there on the left. Right. The right. It's the right of the map, on the left. Barrack is in the air, providing vision, so he's detected. He knows it's coming in. Valkyrie's on the scene. Gonna have to load. So Valkyries are pretty damn strong in the group of eight. Course is fighting back. Temples on the scene. Temples trying to storm, but they run away. They dance. The little bit of Valkyrie micro. Looking cute. Looking good. Another drop on the other side. Nothing in sight there, though. So he's gonna just walk back home. The walk of shame. Well, the, 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 the bra on the bright side here, though, he saved those Zealots and High Templars. He saved those units. But it is kind of the shame, uh, the walk of shame back home, where, you know, they're just walking home and enemies laughing at them, pointing at them, ridiculing them. Ha ha, you failed, you bitch. You failed, you bitch. So triple Templar, tim triple tank in the back, not Templars. These are not Templars. I, 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 I assure you, definitely not High Templars. They're tanks. Silly RJB, they're tanks. Okay, so another drop being prepared. Four shuttles, no Corsairs on the scene. They got killed by the Valkyries. We got Beal moving out with a big mass attack. Marines and tanks. Ready to go, ready to strike. Drop are gonna unload on the middle and clear this out and then go for a counter move. You just have to kill all of this here in the middle. Though. And the Marine split is pretty good. The Templars are carpeting the ground everywhere. Very good Templar storms. You got electrified. And when you're built of meat and bone and skin, getting electrified doesn't end too well. As we could see right there, they exploded. I don't think humans actually explode when they get electrified, it's more like they burn on the inside. Kind of painful, really painful, but they don't quite explode into a blood splatter when they get stormed like that. I don't think that's factually accurate, to be honest. Carriers on the way there on the 1 o'clock spawn location. Bishop is having some trouble getting his drops to arrive on destination. He does have Dragoons, he might try to clear out the skies. It's something he will have to do, clear out those skies and open up the map for those shuttle drops to fly in. Because otherwise the Valkyries are just going to see them fly across the map and take them down. Kind of like that, that was a shuttle trying to fly in, gets taken down very easily. Bill is removing that wall on the front because it's obstructing him leaving the base. But move, removing those depots is also going to make it easier for Bishop to get in there. As of course, if we ignore those tanks on the high ground that are still there being absolute annoyances. Mines in the middle, some micro as well. Bishop is lying in wait on the middle, waiting to strike. Probes are moving to this proxy gas base. He needs a little bit more gas for those carriers. 
He's got about 71 probes, a lot of money in the bank. He's got four Nexus and one more there on the side. Gonna put those probes to good use, put them to work. No observer on the middle, so the mines are effective. Is he making them? Yes, he is. There's three observers on the middle. Gonna provide detection. Tanks are moving out as well. Looks like Bill knows carriers have entered the battle. But well, we'll soon enter the battle. There's somewhere on the map right there. So first, Dragoons against tanks and Storms in the mix as well. Storms are great against tanks. Tanks can't run away. They're just gonna have to sit there and take it. And they don't like it. That's a painful one. The Templars underrated against those huge balls of tanks that are all on the middle. And no, the balls don't touch. Carriers in the air, ready to strike, ready to push back. Goliath has been built and more are on the way. So Valkyries are winning in the back, so he's got, he's got ghosts as well. So I feel a lockdown, I smell it in the air. I smell a lockdown and it's not smelling too good for Bishop, but it's smelling like Oh, pure, delicious pasta, or some, some delicious food that smells really good. It smells like some delicious food that smells really good. I, I, I don't know what you find delicious, I find pizza delicious, lasagna. I also find, find a lot of Japanese and Korean food, very, very tasty, or Chinese food. There's a lot of different kinds of Chinese food that I absolutely love. It smells kind of like that. So the carriers do clear out the entire mill. Valkyries have been taken down. Ghosts are lying in wait with their lockdown. They probably do have energy, or maybe they do not yet have energy. More Valkyries on the way. Carriers are kind of dominating the middle for now, but he's scared of those ghosts. He's gonna have to run away and let the Dragoons kill the ghosts. So a couple ghosts do go down. Now the carriers are going back forward. The micro here is very good. Very good micro. I said it before. Bishop has really good control over his armies and his units. Ghost still in the back. Goliath pushing those carriers back. There's about 11 carriers on the map. 10. Make it 10. Storms on those Goliaths. Hitting his own interceptors as well. Goliath stepping out of the storm. Chasing down those carriers. Really, really big amounts of damage. A lot of Valkyries onto the scene. Joining the fray. Carriers nowhere left to run. But he's got some storms. They're in the mix. But the storms are not enough to kill the Valkyries. The Valkyries do go down in the end. But the carriers were pretty much all dead and gone. Only 4 of them are left alive. Very highly effective move there from Bjol. Bishop is doing his best, but his best apparently is just not enough. Carriers do have some upgrades though. There are 2-3-2. Two, two. The tanks are on 3-3, three, three, so the upgrades there for both players are very, very good. Gateway units there are 3-3-3 three, three, three as well. He's now switching from carriers to gateway units. Because if he goes for carriers again, he will not have enough time to build the carriers and get interceptors. Because there's not much in between the middle and his main base. So now we're probably gonna see just a mass gateway army with two carriers that survive fighting against the tank and Goliath army. So Bishop is now kind of locked into his gateway army. He's building a lot of Zelda at the same time, gonna try to keep up the pressure, try to outproduce Biol, which historically speaking has been one of Biol's main weaknesses. His production is simply slower than his opponent's because his APM is simply a bunch lower than all the other top level players. You can see that not all of his factories are producing. His supply is on 160. There is a real chance for Bishop to try and push for the win here. But we got raids on the middle to counter the carriers. Carriers go down, but now it's all zealots on the map. One tank is still on the high ground. A lot of tanks spawning all at the same time. But this is a lot of zealots coming across the map. And more are in production. Observer on the scene. You can see the raid, but scans the observer. Gets taken down, but as a second observer, you can still see them storms them, and it's the race to run away. So it looks like Gil is in a tight spot here, but he does manage to stop the zealots right at the front door as another wave of kings spawn just in time. Going for the pylon. Smart move. Depower the gateways instead of killing the gateways. Same effect, same effect. So most of the raids did go down. Cloak is running out. Dragoons are there lying in wait to snipe them off as they appear out of nowhere. Big Zelda bomb coming from the left. Dragoon Zelda from the right. His units are sandwiched. Nowhere left to go. Nowhere left to run. Their last heroic stand here on 3 o'clock is over. It was for nothing. 
they died for nothing. Their sacrifice was in vain. Now this entire army from Bishop is gonna penetrate right into Bill's base. Right here through the front door. Tank on high ground being an absolute bitch, sieging up. Templar storming on the tanks. Tanks having a great time storming. Kills about six, five to seven tanks there in that choke point. But it looks like Bill's production is just enough to keep up with Bishop's non-stop aggression. Drop over the front. He's gonna take care of the high ground. Unloading on top of the tanks. Lockdowns, shutting down the shuttles. The shuttles already unloaded everything they had inside them. More storms coming down. And it looks like Bill has defended himself. If only Bishop had a drop coming in at the same time to hit the minerals in the back. There's a little bit of lack of experience showing here. There's a little bit of lack of experience showing here. Bishop couldn't quite make drops to hit those minerals at the same time. Where the more experienced, expert, fastest players they would be making these gateway mass attacks and land or send in a storm drop at the same time. Mines in the middle, triggering a lot, a lot of dead zealots. He's going straight for the main base and Bill's army is here on the right side. So he's going to get into that base and do a lot of damage. A lot of zealots are coming through. Goes behind the tanks, finding a lot of damage support. More tanks spawning. He's in the base. Bill is pulling back with those tanks because he realizes that yeah, that's a lot of units in my base. This is not looking too pretty for me. Not looking too pretty. Bishop going for more carriers but again. Maybe not the best timing. Maybe he should have just gone with more gateway zealot temple attacks and a shuttle drop. But I understand why he would go for carriers again. Even though carriers so far have not been very successful in this battle. They have not done much yet. So now Bjol. No longer a proxy base on the map to slow him down. He can now go for the attack and break through the front door. There's no cannons in between. Just the production of Bishop to keep Biol away from killing Bishop. Great, amazing storms. Killing pretty much every single tank that there is. But Templar's finishing the job. Two mines on them. Scans, but Templars go bye-bye. Templar is too slow, they go bye-bye as well. Now we've got this army from the right joining up with the army on the middle. Will this gateway production be enough to keep up with Bjol's tank army? It's very strong. It be upgraded. Carriers are finishing up soon. He's got seven of them on the way. Seven of them on the way. A couple of them almost finished up. A couple of them just started production. He has oh, one more Stargate right there. So he's got eight right here, nine right there. He's building more shuttles. He might go for that Templar drop that he really needs. Also, Bishop miscalculated how much gas he needs because he's got 20,000 gas. He's got too much gas, way too much gas. He, he could basically pull all the probes off the minerals and just mine, uh, off the gas and just mine minerals with all of them. You would never have to mine a single gas ever again when you have 20,000 gas in the bank. But that's a little bit of experience he's lacking on fast, I assume. So good unload, good unload. Gonna try to kill those tanks. The tanks, though, the unseeched ones are killing the zealots. They do a lot of damage. Tanks are setting up. Going into that main base, got 59 probes still alive. Carriers have arrived. Carriers have arrived. So they will provide some support. Collides have been built there for fuel. The carriers still building interceptors, so they're not fully operational at full power yet. Zelda spawning, joining the battle. Goliaths are the last line of offense against the carriers. The carriers are the last line of defense against the lines and the tanks. It looks like the game will go on for a little bit longer because Bishop is gonna push back against the advancing army. Two more carriers spawned in the back, three more on the way, tanks teaching up to hit those pylons and the power. Actually just gonna attack whatever he can. He's gonna attack whatever he can. 
So first let's take care of that proxy base. Ghosts in the mix cloaked up. Bishop won't see them coming. Carriers are in danger. Alert, alert, strange to danger. Carriers do buy. One, two, three, four, five. They all do get locked up in the sky. Prism, nowhere to run. Easy picking for Biol. Easy to take them down. Beautiful move, smart move to use the cloak to make sure that Bishop cannot respond. Well, he had an observer right there, so he probably could have seen them. It's just there are so many things happening that sometimes you don't see what's walking where with the units and the vision you've got on the map. You cannot look everywhere all at once. Trying to kill this. Carriers have been eliminated. You've got two more on the map. Swarming all over the place. A surround of tanks on two. Bishop calls GG. He knows it's over. Can't quite stay in the race. This game number one there goes towards Buell. Bishop fought valiantly. Got close to toppling the lead in his favor. Got close to it. To toppling the favor in his favor. Sounds stupid. But Biol stays alive, stays upright, and his experience on fastest shows as he manages to outplay Bishop, who is still pretty much just a small little fletchling growing in the big pond, the giant pond of one versus one fastest. I think if he keeps on playing, he might become an absolute force to be reckoned with. That was game number one. We've got more games, and they will be coming up sometime this week. Thank you for watching. It was RGB for RJB TV. See you soon.